Hello YouTube. So as we know, Micah released back in patch 3.5 as a dedicated support for physical. This is something that a lot of people, especially Eula mains, have been waiting for for years. But Micah ended up being a massive letdown and completely failed to be the support that physical needed. So today, I want to talk about what exactly went wrong with Micah and what I would change with him. But first, Please be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I put a lot of work into theory crafting, so any support is greatly appreciated. Alright, so the main issue with Micah is the amount of buffing he provides is just not that great, especially when compared to other dedicated supports, such as Farazan, who are at least only two patches below him. Micah buffs attack speed, phys attack speed, physical damage bonus, and then also physical crit damage at Constellation 6. Let's take a deep dive to see why his buffing isn't so good. First, his physical damage bonus buff. For some strange reason, Micah's, Micah's physical damage percent buff is dependent on how many enemies there are. This is terrible because it is completely out of your control. The size of the buff isn't even that big. 50% damage bonus at its maximum. Compare this to Farazan whom gives 38.5% damage bonus without any weird condition, while also providing resistance strat and a bunch of other utility, and then Micah's just seems massively undertuned. A lot of Micah's power budget seems to have went towards his attack speed buff, but if we look at the characters we have that are intended to be physical damage dealers, we have Eula, Fremenae, Xinyan, and Razor. What do all four of these characters have in common? They are all Claymore users. Claymore wielding characters usually benefit the least out of attack speed buffs out of all weapon types because they have the most hit lag. And to quickly summarize what hit lag is, it's basically the impact you feel when melee characters attacks connect with an enemy or object. This results in overall longer animation times for your attacks and the hit lag portion of your animation is not sped up by attack speed, thus resulting in melee, melee characters, especially claimers, not getting that much benefit from, benefit from attack speed. Now, Eula does get some decent benefit out of attack speed, because getting in an extra hit allows her to get an extra stack for her burst. This isn't spectacular, but it's decent enough. But on the other hand, Razor already has 40% attack speed from his own burst, so adding another 25% on top of that alongside his claimer hit lag really isn't doing much of anything. And Xinyan at Constellation 6 wants to use her charged attacks for the, for the attack buff she gets. Micah's attack speed buff only works on normal attacks and not charged attacks, so she doesn't benefit from this at all. And for Fremenae, Micah does allow him to weave in an in 2 between his initial skill casts in about the same amount of time he would have done with an in one without the attack speed, but it still ends up not being enough of a benefit for Micah to, prov to provide more damage than Bennett for him. Ironically, Micah providing this large attack speed buff, as well as being Cryo, resulted in him being better for Wanderer than he is for Eula and any other physical team. This is because ranged characters don't have any hit lag, allowing them to fully and properly utilize attack speed. That, and Wanderer can take advantage of Micah being Cryo for his own 20% 20, 20 crit rate buff. This is good enough value for Micah to be roughly equivalent to Bennett as an alternative for Wanderer, if, and only if, Wanderer is using Yunjin as his fourth slot. To put it into perspective, imagine if after years of waiting for an Anemo support, Zhao Mains had finally gotten Faruzan but you would get a stronger team by using Farazan as a VV bot on a Hu Tao team than you would by using her to support Zhao. That's essentially what happened with Micah. Eula Mains waited years for a dedicated physical support, and when we finally got him, he somehow ended up being a better, better with an Anemo DPS than he is with Eula. That's kinda messed up, and I would definitely be upset about that if I was a Eula main. But, there are still even more reasons why Micah's buffing is so underwhelming compared to other dedicated supports. Most dedicated supports are able to buff multiple units on the team. Farazan buffs every Anemo unit on the team, which allows her to do some pretty solid damage for a buffer, and allow you to use a third Anemo unit doing a lot of damage as well. 
Goro buffs every Geo unit on the team, which allows Albedo to do a good amount of damage in an Ito team, and can even make Zhongli do somewhat notable damage. Shenha buffs every Cryo unit on the team, including herself, and then Sara is able to get her own buff in addition to buffing Raiden, which allows her to deal really good damage with her burst. While these characters will usually be buffing 2 to 3 characters on the team, Micah can only buff 1. His buff only applies to the active character, and even if they did apply to the whole team, it wouldn't matter because there isn't a single character in the game that can deal physical damage from off-field to benefit from him anyway. There is the Ocean Huge Clam set which turns healing into physical damage, which Micah himself can use, but this set doesn't scale with your damage bonus and crit, so it doesn't utilize his buffs at all. Micah only buffing your active character also restricts how good he can be with Eula, because if you swap off her to manually detonate her burst, her burst, her burst won't get his buffs. His buff doesn't linger at all like Bennett's either, it just immediately goes away if you swap off. Going back to the Ocean Huge Clam set, this is another problem I have with Micah's kit. He is a dedicated physical support that is also a healer, yet he doesn't make that good use out of the Clam set even though it is a healing set that deals physical damage. He gets one fully stacked instance of Clam damage from his initial team-wide heal, but after that his heals are only for the active character. They are spaced out too far to get many of them into each Clam proc. On top of that, because his burst duration is only 15 seconds long, his healing isn't lasting long enough for him to get many instances of clam damage either. Then the last issue I have with Micah's kit is that he only applies cryo one time, leaving him with no source of off-field cryo application to sustain superconduct. This isn't a huge deal with Eula and Fermine since they bring their own cryo anyway, but if your DPS isn't cryo, like Xenian or Razor, then Micah being unable to sustain Superconduct himself is a massive issue. So, let's recap. Micah is the first and only dedicated physical support, yet he is barely a DPS upgrade for Eula, and has issues that is, can make him not even worth using for her. He's a DPS loss for Fremine, but essentially unusable for Razor and Jinyan. So, out of the four physical DPS in the game, he is only decent with one of them, and even there he is questionable. Now, how do we fix this? If we pretend that I was allowed to change up Micah's kit to fix his issues, here is what I would do. First, I would get rid of the attack speed buff altogether. I would much rather we just had an entirely different character dedicated to buffing attack speed, one that doesn't have some of their power budget put into physical, into buffing physical when the characters that best use attack speed don't do physical damage. Since we are getting rid of the attack speed buff, we need to replace it with something else. Part of the problem we established with Micah is only one character on the team can utilize his buffs. To fix that, here's what I would give him. When characters affected by Soul Wind trigger a superconduct reaction, the enemy's resistance to physical, cryo, and electro is reduced by 20%. Now, the cryo and electro portion of your team's damage has a means of getting buffed which is usually something lacking in physical teams since Superconduct doesn't actually buff them. The, ex the extra physical shred we gave Micah here would also be better for enhancing your physical damage than his attack bu speed buff ever could be. We're also going to fix the physical damage bonus buff from his A1 passive. I would completely remove the mechanic of it changing based on enemy counts and just make it a flat 50% damage bonus buff. Then I would also increase the duration of both his skill and burst to 25 seconds so that they can last an entire rotation. This may sound excessively long, but Farazan is allowed to have 24 seconds of time on her buffs, so why shouldn't Micah? I would also have his buffs simply applied to the entire team regardless if they are on, on field or not, thus allowing Eula to swap freely and still get his buff on her burst. Then we are also going to give him better healing intervals. To do that, I would simply change his C1 to make him automat automatically heal during his burst every second. This should be enough to give him max clam damage every time. That, combined with the much higher duration we would have on his burst, should allow him to deal good sub DPS damage. I actually calculated what that damage would look like. Assuming Micah would get 7 full 
stack clan procs over a full rotation, that would be about 270,000 damage dam per rotation. That may sound like too much for a buffer, but that's about what Sara does in a Raiden Hyper team, so I don't think it's too much. But those are all the changes I would make to Micah. To give a visual of how much of a difference this would make, I calculated Eula's team DPS both with Micah's current kit and with my improved version of his kit. With these changes, Eula's team DPS would go from 56,000, which is the lowest I've ever calculated for any 5-star DPS team, all the way up to 69,000. That's a 24% increase and would put our DPS up into the higher end compared to other 5-star DPS teams. And yeah, that's everything I wanted to talk about today. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And please also be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know your thoughts. Also, please feel free to join my dis Discord. Thanks. Bye.